Welcome back. It's me, Lou. All right, so today is the weekly vlog. Uh, we're going to do a little bit something different today. Um, this is going to be kind of like almost like a retrospect as we look back on the character of Spawn then and now. So my history with Spawn goes way, way back. Um, I was a big fan of Todd McFarlane when he illustrated uh, Spider-Man in the late 80s. Uh, when Todd McFarlane, Rob Liefeld, Jim Lee, Wills Portacio, Jim Valentino, uh, Mark Silvestri, and Eric Larson broke off from Marvel Comics to create Image Comics, I was like, <laughs> at the time, I kind of felt like I was like the number one fan, and I was so on board with all the new uh, comic book characters they were going to create. Uh, the one comic book character that came out of Image Comics that I was most excited for was Todd McFarlane's creation, Spawn. Uh, McFarlane talks about how he created Spawn, I think, when he was a teenager. And it was a character he always kind of had in the back of his head. Uh, visually, I always loved the look of Spawn. It's kind of like a weird mix of like Spider-Man, Venom, and Doctor Strange. It's a beautiful character. You know, it's uh, seen video games, um, live action movie, an animated series, and countless and countless comic books. And not to mention the action figures, too. Uh, McFarlane, with the Spawn line of action figures, really revolutionized the toy industry. And for me, it's just been such a fun ride to like see everything from beginning to where we are now. So this is going to be kind of like a look back at Spawn and also kind of see where Spawn is right now in terms of the action figures. All right, so uh, to begin with, we have this. Uh, this is kind of the genesis uh, of it all. This is Spawn number one. Published by Image Comics in the early 90s. I want to say maybe 91 or 92. Um, this one was autographed by Todd McFarlane. Uh, McFarlane was someone I met um, a handful of times uh, during my teenage years. You know, whenever there was a big comic book show in Chicago, you know, he'd always be coming through. And whenever he was, I always made sure I was there. Um, great guy. He was always very nice to me. Um, at the time, I was an aspiring artist. And he was one of those dudes that always kind of gave me words of encouragement. And uh, I don't know, this great guy overall loved the Spawn comic books. I'm sure I should probably treat this comic book better since it's the is first issue and it's autographed. You know, maybe I should send it away to get slabbed, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, speaking of myself being a big uh, fan of McFarlane, he was also a major influence in my in my illustration. So. When I was younger, even throughout most of my adult life, all I ever wanted to do was draw and write comic books. And for a period of time after college, I was very fortunate and I got to do that. Um, it's something I really miss a lot, you know, being creative on that level. Um, you know, this, you know, I remember spending days writing and just illustrating. And if for me, it was, God, creatively, I think that was like one of the funnest periods of my life and I'm not sure if I'll ever get back to that I'd love to but you know as you grow up and deal with like adulting and responsibilities you know you really can't chase your dreams like you once did uh, but who knows maybe I'll win the lottery and I'll <laughs> maybe at that point I'll devote the rest of my life to uh, pursuing my you know my creative um, you know passions like writing and illustration but this is an illustration of spawn I drew back in 1992 I believe I was maybe like 16 at the time so, um, as you can see, I was very influenced by like artists like Jim Lee and Todd McFarlane. And uh, I thought it'd be cool to draw my own take on Spawn. And uh, there was a convention. It was the Chicago Comic Con. This was prior to Wizard World taking it over. And this was kind of like the inaugural event for the launch of Image Comics. And then they kind of had like a 24-hour signing in a tent in the parking lot. And I think all the image creators were out that weekend. And McFarlane was there, and Eric Larson, Jim Lee, Wills Portacio, Mark Silvestri, and Rob Liefeld. So I kind of used this as an opportunity. I wanted to get the, all their autographs on, uh, a single, uh, on a single piece, but at the time, you know, it's not like they had a poster or a comic book that had all their artwork. So for myself, I thought, you know what, I'll just draw Spawn, since he kind of felt like he was the flagship character of Image Comics, besides, like, you know, Rob Liefeld's Youngblood. And I'll have Todd sign it and all the other artists. So I brought this up to Todd McFarlane, you know, my illustration of Spawn. And then Todd signed it. He was joking around saying thanks for the idea. And here it is, Todd McFarlane in silver ink. 
Um, other um, artists who've signed this, who were um, who belonged to Image Comics during the '90s, there's Eric Larson, creator of Savage Dragon. I want to say this is Larry Stroman. Um, you might remember him. He illustrated some books from Marvel and DC. I think at the time he was really popular for doing uh, X Factor. Uh, here's Brian Murray. He was illustrating Supreme for Extreme Studios. Um, I believe this is Jim Lee over here in the corner. I think, no, I take it back. No, this is Jim Valentino. Jim Valentino was doing the comic book Shadowhawk for Image Comics. Over here is Jim Lee. Uh, next to him was his studio mate at the time, Wills Portacio. Uh, Jim Lee is uh, world-renowned for illustrating X-Men and creating that iconic 90s look for the X-Men. Uh, he later moved on to, um, you know, he had his studio Homage Comics, and then they later moved on to do Wildstorm Studios, which he sold to DC, and, you know, since then he's been kind of like one of the big hedge honchos in DC Comics. Um, Wills Portacio, um, he was known for illustrating The Punisher, Uncanny X-Men. Uh, when they jumped to Image Comics, he produced um, Wet Works, and then he's also had runs on Spawn, Batman. Uh, you know, he, he revisited the X-Men titles with, like, I think he did, I think, X-Force for a while, um, and produced numbers of covers, which he still does today. I don't remember whose autograph this is, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, next to Wills, we have Dale Keown. Uh, Dale Keown, um, he really rose to prominence with his run on The Incredible Hulk with Peter David. Uh, he also created the character Pitt. And I think I had him sign this twice for some reason, unless he signed it twice. I'm still not sure who this is right here. I got to figure that out one day. Uh, but yeah, this is my take on Spawn. Um, I illustrated this when I was much younger. Um, and if you're curious, I illustrated this uh, with pencil. For, I mean, if you're, if you're familiar with the comic book uh, drawing process, it's changed a lot, you know, especially since the move has gone to digital. Um, but I originally illustrated this in pencil, and then I inked it in, in, in India ink using a Krauquil pen. I believe it was a size 102, and also, a, I think, a sable brush. All right, so now we're going to take a look at some Spawn action figures. So this is the second release of the first version of Spawn. Um, the first version was differed from this one because, as you can see, the first release had the masked head, where the second release uh, had the unmasked head, and this figure is affectionately known as um, Hamburger Head Spawn. So the reason why... Um, you have to read the comics to understand why Spawn looks like this. But if you look down the middle of his face, it's covered with like stitches. So um, that, that that scar and that stitching on his face was actually caused by Batman. So during the 90s, they had a crossover with DC Comics. It was Spider, it was not Spider-Man, it was Spawn uh, meets Batman. It was in a, a prestige format comic book. Prestige format comic books were generally 48 to 64 pages uh, thick. And they kind of were printed on a cardstock, unlike the standard comic book at the time, which was printed on newspaper. Um, so in the comic book, Batman throws a batarang at Spawn, I believe, towards the end of the comic. And it gets lodged into Spawn's head. So this is kind of to, like, um, you know, immortalize the fact that Spawn and Batman crossed over. It's a cool figure, and we're actually going to look at this. Uh, but in addition to that, we have this. This is a much more recent version of the Spawn action figure produced for the Mortal Kombat 11 line of toys. And this is Shadow of, of Spawn. So under the, under the Mortal Kombat line produced by McFarlane, he's released you know, a number of Spawn figures uh, under the Mortal Kombat banner. This one I'm, I think is my favorite just because this is, I think, the closest one to the original comic book design. Uh, somewhere in the mid-90s, I believe in 1990, Spawn kind of did away with the red on his bodysuit. He still retained the red on his like boots and his gauntlets and his cape. But I think it was around 95 or 96, his costume went to like black and white. So all the red pieces were kind of like blacked out. But for me, I love this version just because it's a throwback to the original design. Uh, I think the only thing that's slightly a bit more modern is his gauntlet and his... Um, 
boot right here. But otherwise, this is a beautiful figure. And if you remember, I think it was two years ago, McFarlane had the um, crowdfunding campaign where they produced uh, the throwback figure to uh, the original Spawn design, but it was a modern action figure and it kind of had the giant wings. Unfortunately, I didn't back the project because I kind of, at the time, it was kind of out of my price range. And for me, I'd rather have like the original OG spawn figure than you know the newer ones it's cool to get the new figs you know, just because they're like modern engineered and they feature all the bells and whistles of like a you know modern day action figure but I'm very nostalgic just for the old stuff also because you know I grew up during this time period and I was kind of here since day one so for me to get this older stuff is is kind of a treat so we're gonna take a look at this guy first And as you can see, um, the nice thing with this packaging also is that they really had the collector in mind. Because if you didn't want to take it out of the package, you pretty much had a full view of the figure. And a weird thing is they don't package a lot of stuff like they used to, like this. Um, this kind of like clamshell package, you know, in addition to like patch, pa uh, packaging action figures like this, but... If you remember during the 90s and 2000s, a lot of stuff was packaged in this kind of plastic. And there was like studies because um, a lot of times people would actually <laughs> cut themselves severely trying to get the stuff out of here. Uh, because, you know, anytime you cut the plastic, you produce these really sharp edges. And I just remember reading articles about how people would like cut themselves and like need to go to the emergency room. Uh, one of my favorite stories about this kind of clamstell style packaging is when Microsoft released the, um, the, the, the original Xbox S controller. So if you're like an old school Xbox fan, you'll remember that with the first system, they had that giant potato sized controller called the Duke. And um, at some point, Microsoft, during the first uh, generation Xbox, they decided to update the controller to make it a little bit smaller. And I think it was called the S controller. And I remember my buddy Gabe, he bought the S controller from Best Buy. And then when he was trying to take it out, you know, very similar package like this one, he ended up cutting the cord <laughs> and he returned it to the store saying it was like that. And I thought that was like the funniest thing. All right, so let's get this guy open. I'm getting really close to like cutting the comic book, so I got to be careful. All right, I didn't cut the comic. I apologize in advance, this is a kind of a pain in the butt, but this is how action figures were in the 90s for some companies. It was nice if you're a mint on card collector because you didn't have to worry about like taking the figures out if you just wanted to look at them and display them. Uh, but if you are a loose collector, this was kind of like a chore to get these figures out. Uh, some of these older spawn figures too, you can find them online new for reasonable prices. I, got, I, I believe I got this one for maybe like... I think 15 bucks. I didn't pay a whole lot for this. I remember in the 90s too when um, uh, Tide Toys first started. Um, there was commercials for the, uh, you know, advertising the Spawn figures. And McFarlane would be in the Spawn Mobile. <laughs> which was kind of funny. It was, it was almost kind of like a vanity thing. It's like he had no, you know, for the most part, unless you're a comic book fan, you wouldn't know who Todd McFarlane is. You know, McFarlane would later be in mainstream news when he bought the um, uh, those million dollar baseballs. Uh, I think it was Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa's uh, what was it like hundredth hundredth home run or something like that. Oh yeah, on the back of the box. Before we forget, uh, here's the other figures that were out. There was Spawn, Tremor, Medieval Spawn, Violator Clown, Overkill, Spawn Mobile, the Violator Monster Rig, and Spawn Alley, which is really cool that they made a play set. Um, at the time, it was called Todd Toys, and I think Mattel requested that they change the name to. I think McFarlane Toys. I'm, I, I, I can't remember correctly, but I remember there was a reason why he switched from Todd Toys to um, McFarlane. Because I think there was some sort of conflict within like another company. Uh, here's the play features. The cape swings open. Uh, you can remove the chain. And he has that, you know, 
two by four with the nail in it. Alright, so included with the action figure is kind of, I think this is kind of like maybe a reprint of Spawn number one. It's been some time. Or is this a different issue? Yeah, I don't remember this, if this was, it's like, this might be like some sort of abbreviated version of like Spawn number one. Yeah, beautiful artwork. I don't think this is... Wait, is this even McFarlane? No, I don't think this is McFarlane's work, which is weird. This might be Greg Capullo. Oh, no. It's, all right, so the pencils is Brad Gorby. All right, so this is a weird comic book. This isn't even Spawn number one. This is like some sort of abbreviated uh, retelling of Spawn's history, which is kind of weird, but at the same time... Um, I guess it makes it kind of encourages you, encourages you to go to the comic book shop and actually hunt down the real, you know, first issue. And we have uh, the second release of the original Spawn figure here in hand. Uh, beautiful colors, uh, very very antiquated uh, articulation scheme, as you can see. So he comes with a 2x4 with a nail. Let's get that in focus. So he, there's a 2x4. Uh, he comes with a necklace that goes across his cape. Uh, this is a piece that's very easy to lose. It's very small. Um, I might, might actually just super glue one end of it into the cape just so I don't lose it. And then here's the cape. It comes with this separate piece, so this plugs into his back. And then here's the cape itself. So I remember when I had this figure, um, so the gimmick with this cape is that, you know, you can actually fold it. So it so it can, like, cover up spawn, like, in the comic books. And then when you want, you can, like, open it up to reveal spawn inside. And I remember when I had this figure, or at least on one of my figures, I actually just being an idiot i just cut these these folded pieces out because i felt they were kind of cumbersome on the figure and i just kind of wanted spawn with a very neutral cape i mean i talk about that all the time in my videos you know i don't like capes that kind of like flap around too much so so the way this works is you plug this in uh, to the cape it's kind of shaped so it conforms to the cape itself just like that and then there's a peg here that plugs into the back of spawn. There's a peg, uh, on, there's a socket in the middle of his spine. And then you plug this in. I remember this not really gelling all that well. I didn't like this. I think that's why I cut the cape, because I kind of just want to drape it on without all this weird gimmicky stuff on it. So it plugs in like that. And then you just mount it. Uh, shoot, like this. And as you can see, it's kind of cumbersome on him. That's why I cut off these ends. But the whole deal was you got to, like, pretend he was, like, hiding in the shadows, like in the comic books. And then when he reveals himself, you know, the cape starts flowing out. Which it looks, you know, visually it looks really impressive. And this necklace piece with the skulls go plugs into it. like that so that kind of completes the spawn look and it's his hamburger head face 
it's kind of like burned and scarred. It looks like it might be covered in maggots. And then there's the stitching down the middle. You know, that's after Batman threw the boomerang at him during their crossover. All right, so let's examine the figure without the cape. Uh, this thing's kind of nuts. All right, so here is Spawn minus the cape. So the, as you can see, beautiful sculpting. The articulation, it's very limited. You, you're looking at something that's maybe, I think maybe seven points of articulation. Uh, the head rotates, you know, that's arms. Uh, no elbows, no wrists, no waist swivel. Um, the legs kick up and they bend. That's the extent, you know, this guy doesn't do a whole lot. But keep in mind, you know, this is what most action figures were like back then. It wasn't so much later as when he kind of like amped things up and added more articulation and made the figures larger. Uh, these chains are kind of made of a soft rubber and they plug into his buckle like that. Yeah, so overall it's a solid, decent looking figure. Let's get a closer look at his face. Yeah, he's kind of like mean mugging you right now. So this is version two. Version one had the masked face. You know, with this one you're getting the really grumpy looking angry face where he's just kind of like staring a hole through you. And then here's his crazy uh, two by four with the nail through it. And if you're familiar with the Spawn character, I'm not sure how it is right now, but when they first introduced him, he Spawn kind of like ran on magic, and he had like a limited tank of how much magic he could use uh, because he made a deal with the devil, uh, Malboglia. All right, so that's Spawn. This is old school Spawn. And let's take a look at this guy. This is Shadow of Spawn. Now, this was a figure I was really excited for. Um, very excited for it. I mean, just because, for one, it's in the Mortal Kombat line, and two, it's Spawn, but like old school style. I'm, I'm a big fan of this, like plain old Spawn. Alright, so uh, first impressions of this figure. Um, it looks beautiful. It's really on par with like the stuff McFarlane's putting out with um, the DC Multiverse line of action figures. You know, there's some compatibility between the two lines. I think they're kind of like within the same scale of each other. You know, the Mortal Kombat stuff and the DC stuff. Aesthetically, you know, they all kind of look, you know, within that same range of detail also. And I'm trying to figure out how to get this guy out. This guy has a crap load of um, plastic ties holding him down. Alright, so at the very least, I'm not going to take this guy out because this video is running pretty long. Um, but, you know, at the very least, I can at least, you know, show him up close. Just to get a better idea of him. You know, it's a beautiful looking figure. Uh, I'm sure if you want a more, much more thorough review, you know, this figure's been out for months. You know, just go hunt around on YouTube. But you can see there's a huge jump in technology, you know, with the old figure versus the new one, you know, not only size wise, but just, in, you know, the way everything's engineered, a lot more articulation. So it's like spawn then versus spawn now. It's crazy how much, you know, uh, action figure technology has progressed, you know, since the 90s. You know, we're very spoiled nowadays. And here's the cape. Really beautiful. Yeah, so I apologize. You know, this video is running kind of long. I kind of want to just uh, chop it here. So, you know, if you want to check it out, uh, this figure fully, you know, just go hunt around on YouTube. I'm sure you'll find a content creator that will review this thing thoroughly. Love the head. Yeah, overall beautiful piece. 
All right, so that's kind of like my short history with Spawn and the action figures and the comics. Um... You know, if you're from, if you're like me and you're from this time period, <laughs> I make it sound like I'm a time traveler. Uh, if you're like me and, you know, you grew up during the 90s or the early 2000s and you, if you have fond memories of Spawn or the comic books or the toys or whatever, you know, I'd love to hear your stories in the comments down below. Uh, for me, it was such an exciting time, both as a comic book fan and also as a toy collector, you know, in, in the early in the early 90s, you know, we had a, a, like a slight sprinkling of superhero action figures with the like toy biz stuff. But then once McFarlane entered the picture, it like really changed the game. Uh, likewise with the comic books, you know, the minute all those creators left Marvel to produce Image Comics. Uh, unfortunately, none of those characters really carried the kind of weight, you know, during the last 30 years. Like, you know, like a Batman or a Superman or a Spider-Man. But some characters, you know, like Spawn, they're still... They're still they're still relevant today, and they still have very large fan bases. You know, fingers crossed that the live action movie that McFarlane keeps on talking about happens sooner than later. Uh, but we'll see. All right, so let's wrap this one up. Uh, once again, my name is Lou. If you are new to my channel, welcome. If you are a returning viewer, subscriber, thank you so much for your continued support. I greatly appreciate it. So until the next video, be safe, take care of yourself, buy lots of toys, and most importantly, be happy. And I'll see you at the next one. All right, later.